Welcome to the fifth video on cost estimation and cost behavior. I hope you have enjoyed your learning in the previous videos, which looked at splitting mixed costs. In the next two videos, we are going to look at learning curves and how we can use them to estimate costs. This video will look at the basic concepts of learning curves, while the next video will look at more advanced issues. So what are our objectives for the learning curves? First, we need to understand what the learning curve is and when it applies. After this, we need to be able to do various calculations around the learning curve. We are going to be looking at three methods in this regard. We are going to look at the cumulative doubling method, the graphical method, and the mathematical method. In this first video, we will just be looking at the cumulative doubling and graphical methods. We will leave the mathematical method to the second video. So what is the learning curve about? The concept of the learning curve is that when people undertake a new task, they can learn and become more efficient at performing that task. Think about a runner. The first time they go for a 1km run, they are very unfit and it takes them 10 minutes to complete the distance. The next time they run, they go faster, the runner is fitter and has a better understanding of how far 1km is so they can pace themselves better. They take 9 minutes. Eventually, the runner could be taking less than 5 minutes to run that 1 km. At some point, however, the runner can't go any faster, and so plateaus at a speed of maybe 4.5 minutes. This is the idea behind the learning curve. People take less time to perform a task as they get better at it. So generally, we will see that the learning effect applies to labor-intensive tasks. When does the learning curve come into effect? It applies when there is something new. This could be new labor coming in to perform the task for the first time, a new product that has been created for the first time, or a new manufacturing process that is being used for the first time. It does not apply when it is an old process, as all improvements and efficiencies would have already been achieved. It must also be a repetitive process, as this enables learning and efficiencies to be achieved. We need to be aware of some definitions with regards to the learning curves. The learning tempo refers to the percentage at which the labor time decreases each time the number of units produced doubles. This does not only apply to the manufacturing of specific units, but could also refer to the performance of a process or specific task. So let's look at a small example. When we make one unit, our average time to produce is 10 hours. When we make two units, our average time to produce decreases to 8 hours. The learning tempo is then 20%, being the reduction in the time between 10 hours and 8 hours of 2 hours divided by the initial average time of 10 hours, which gives us 20%. The learning rate is then the number we are actually interested in, as this is the one that goes into our calculations. If you are given the learning rate, you can simply use that. If you are given the learning tempo, you need to take 100% and subtract the learning tempo to get the learning rate. In our previous example, we calculated the learning tempo as 20%. This would mean that we can calculate the learning rate as 100% minus the 20% to get 80%. Alternatively, we could simply divide the two units average time of 8 hours by the 10 hours average time of the one unit to get a rate of 80%. It is important to note that we are dealing with average times and not incremental or total times. We have three methods for estimating the learning curves. These are the cumulative doubling method, the graphical method, and the mathematical method. In this video, we will focus on the cumulative doubling method and the graphical method. We will leave the mathematical method for our next video, where we will also perform some more advanced calculations. Let us then begin by looking at the cumulative doubling method. We will look at a short example to see how it works. In this example, we have someone who takes 30 hours to assemble the first widget. 
we see that the learning rate is 90%. We are then required to prepare a table showing the effects of the learning curve up until the eighth unit. So we have an outline of our table. It has two sections, one for the cumulative time and one for the incremental time. The cumulative time is looking at our total production. The number of units represents the total number of units that Maxwell will produce. Notice that each number is double the previous number. So 2 is double 1, 4 is double 2, and 8 is double 4. This is important because remember from our definition that the learning rate only applies every time production doubles. Another important issue to note is that the cumulative doubling method only works on doubling points, hence the method's name. So if we want to know the average time for the first three units, or five units, or ten units, we can't use the cumulative doubling method because these are not doubling points. Let us now consider the cumulative section of this table. We are told that the first unit takes Maxwell 30 hours. Therefore, the average time for the first unit and the total time will be 30 hours. When we move on to two units, this is a doubling point. Remember, two is double one. Therefore, the learning rate will apply. Remember, our learning rate is applying to the average time. We can calculate the average time for the first two units as the 30 hours average time multiplied by the learning rate of 90%. This gives us 27 hours. This means that the first two units take on average 27 hours per unit to produce. To find the total time for the first two units, we can take the average time of 27 hours and multiply it by the number of units produced. So we have two units multiplied by the 27 hours gives us 54 hours in total. We can follow the same process for four units. Remember, four units is the next doubling point. If we double two, we get four. To get the average time, we take the 27 hours average time for the first two units and multiply it by 90% to get 24.3 hours. Our total time is in the 24.3 hours multiplied by the four units produced to give us a total time of 97.2 hours. Our next doubling point is eight units, which is four doubled. Again, we get to our average time by taking the 24.3 hours, which was the average time for the first four units, and multiply it by 90% to get 21.87 hours. Again, our total time is a 21.87 hours multiplied by the 8 units produced to give us a total of 174 hours.96. This process can then be continued for each subsequent doubling point. So double 8 would be 16. Double 16 units would be 32 units, and so forth. Remember that this method can only be used on doubling points. Now, looking at the cumulative section of this table, we see that the average time per unit is decreasing. However, the total time to produce all units is still increasing. Now, we may not be interested in the total time taken, but maybe we are rather interested in the incremental time taken to make a specific number of widgets. So let us now consider the incremental side of the table. We are no longer considering our total production, but rather each successive group of production. What do I mean by this? When we produced our first unit, our total production went from zero units to one unit. Our incremental production was therefore one unit. When we double our production to two units, we go from one unit to two units. Our incremental production is therefore one additional unit. We then double our total production to four units. We go from two units to four units. Our incremental production is therefore two units. Finally, we double our production from four units to eight units. 
we have now produced an additional four units of the product. This now represents our incremental production at each doubling point. Let us now look at our incremental total time. This represents our total time to produce the incremental number of units. This can be read off the cumulative section of the table as the difference between the total time at each doubling point. So for our first unit, we went from taking no time at all because we didn't produce anything to taking 30 hours. Our incremental time is therefore 30 hours. Our incremental average time is also 30 hours, being the 30 hours divided by the one unit we produced to give us 30 hours. We then made our second unit. We go from 30 hours to 54 hours. Therefore, our incremental time is 24 hours. Again, our average time is the same, being the 24 hours divided by the one extra unit produced to give us an average incremental time of 24 hours. This information now is potentially helpful as we may specifically want to know how long our second unit to produce will take us. We then make our third and fourth units. Here we have gone from a total time of 54 hours to a total time of 97.2 hours. Our incremental time is therefore 43.2 hours. Notice that this time we have made two additional units. So our average incremental time for our third and fourth unit is the 43.2 hours divided by the incremental two units, which gives us an average incremental time of 21.6 hours. At this point, it is important to see that using this cumulative doubling method, we can never get the exact time of the third unit by itself or the fourth unit by itself. We can only calculate the incremental grouping together. We can then finish off with our last doubling point in which we manufactured our additional four units. Our incremental time is 77.76 hours, which is the difference between the 194.96 hours for eight units and the 97.2 hours for the four units. Our average incremental time is then the 19.44 hours, being the 77.76 hours divided by the four incremental units. While this method is easy to calculate and understand, it is very cumbersome and not efficient, as you will not always produce at a doubling point. To overcome this, we can use either the graphical or mathematical models. Let us now consider the graphical approach for the same example we were looking at. I will extend the graph for more units so that the full curve is easier to visualize. When we look at the average time curve, we see that it decreases at a decreasing rate. This graph declines rapidly at first and then starts to slow. Eventually, the decline gets so small that it can be ignored. When this regular efficiency is reached, we refer to it as a steady state level. When we look at the total time curve, we see that it increases rapidly at first and then the increase slows until it starts to increase at a near constant rate, like a normal variable cost curve. When we are interested in finding either the average time or total time to produce a certain number of units, we simply read it off the graph. While the graphical method is nice to visualize with, it is problematic as you will need to use either the cumulative doubling method or the mathematical model to calculate the points needed to accurately plot the graph. Thank you for joining us for our first video on the learning curve. In our next video, which wraps up our series on cost estimation and cost behavior, we will look at the mathematical model to calculate the learning effect and deal with some more advanced calculations. See you next time.